piece of paper and I, I put it on my on my board, like some various ideas about like how to how to turn the juice back up on my drawing. Quit being so idle creativity wise and you know, start giving people more. And Pat inspired me to do that. Piggybacking off of what you, what you were uh, just mentioning about your art, art process, that's that's my next question I want to ask. Have you uh, transitioned? I, I see you do a lot of stuff with uh, Procreate on Instagram and stuff like that. But do you, when you're doing your page layout stuff like that, it, is it all is it digital or are you working? No, on I just, I just when it comes to drawing comics, I'm, I'm doing a big project with Justin right now. I can't say what it is until he says, but. I, I'm way faster, even though even though there's things I can do with Procreate, and I know because, for example, Pat. Well, there's so many people in the industry now who do it digital. It's just digital, 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 and I, I don't blame them because edit it easy, you can fix whatever it is you don't like. It's you can expedite it in a lot of ways. iPad is not going to do me as much service because. I don't, I don't sit like this when I draw. I mean, even my my wrist action, how I draw, is not conducive to the iPad. Um, I like to just basically I just lean on my drawing board, and I my action is almost entirely with my wrist, not with my fingers. So when I have to sit and, and do stuff on the iPad, it's a different posture, it's uncomfortable actually. But I like the iPad for I, I want to do like fun painting. Yeah, that's really why I got it. So uh, let's say let's talk about like an average page. I know every story. I know if you were working, depending on your collaborator and stuff. But if you was to average it out, like how long does it take you to do a page if, if time is not a, a, a factor? Well, <laughs> I've spent my entire career where time is a factor. <laughs> <laughs> like right now is the slowest I've ever been. I'm just really just plotting through this and it's on oversized paper what I'm doing right now and I, I spent way too much time on it. Um, penciling is quick. Penciling is always really quick for me. Um, I, I could pencil, if I had to pencil something fast I could. It just, I'm a fast drawer. I draw really quick. Even I can draw pretty exact really quick. So getting penciled and depending on the inker that I'm working with depends on how well they can adapt to what I'm doing. Because a lot of the guys I've worked with, I work with a long time, and I know what they need to see. So, you know, their days, you know, a page gets done in. A comfortable page would be if I sat down and I, four to six hours would be a nice page. Some pages get done in an hour. Unfortunately, there's always a panel that might take eight hours because it just messes with you. But in general, I can, I, most of my career, I'd say, I spent able to do a couple pages a day. A good chunk of my career, that was no problem. There are days I got four, five, six, seven pages because I had to, but that's another story. I don't have to do that. What about Detective Comics 1000? I really thought your artwork in that, you know, it was an anthology type of uh, issue. Your story with Peter Tomasi broke the new character of, of uh, the Batman mythos and during that time, Arkham Knight. Uh, later on, Peter and Brad Walker would do like the, her, her first story, but you broke, you broke her out. And I thought that once we got to that story at the end of the book, like you really killed it. I thought you stole the show. Uh, I mean, there was a lot of great artists in that book, uh, Jim Lee, and the combination between you and David, like it just, the colors were just poppy, but I really liked how you had the little eyeball, you know, uh, looking looking through the uh, the wall. And I just wanted to know, so how, was that one of those types of stories that took a while? I, I know it was only like four or five pages. It was, I think it was 10. 10. Okay, okay. I think. Um, no, it didn't take too long, but it, I mean, it was like a normal, probably normal, because when you're doing those kind of splash pages, they're just so much fun that it wasn't like, I didn't have to figure anything out, you know, I wasn't working on how best to tell a story and make it flow. It was like, well, let's draw, you know, Bane fighting Batman. You know, how do you want to make it look? And nobody, it was up to me, you know, I didn't have to answer to anyone. So it was just, what cool stuff could I draw? The only one that I like, uh, uh, 
probably thought actually more, or that you, you wouldn't actually really tell was one of Rachel Ghoul or Ross Al Ghoul. I don't know how you pronounce his name. <laughs> Neil, Neil told me it's Ross. He gave me a whole story. Oh, it's Ross. Yeah. Neil there told me it was Ross. And so I, I wanted to kind of do a Neil Adam esque kind of homage at that point, and, and to try to keep my figures a little less beefy, maybe, or just more athletic looking. Sometimes I'll draw a pretty jack looking Batman. So that one is probably the only one, believe it or not, that I spent more time thinking about. But the rest of them. Were what about cool. Arkham Knight? Because she's the, like the character that no one has drawn before, so that didn't take some time. We went back and forth quite because they're having um, Brad and I take take cracks at designing it. And if anything, I could be accused of it's over designing something. That, you know, when you realize, okay, we're going to design this, and what can we do? We have to be inspired somewhat by how Arkham Knight had appeared in the video game, but not beholden to it. You know, like change it. So we both got to try our hand at it and do stuff. And of course, if you're just somewhere, I have the designs for it. But you know, I'm I'm putting in way more crap, basically. And still kind of holding myself back. And Brad was like knowing that he'd have to draw it all the time. You know, he's he put in a much more streamlined. But of course, I was thinking, ah, they'll go with Brad's. If they're smart, they'll just go with Brad's design. And they says, well, no, we want we want to use Doug's design. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, Brad. You know, so. Doug, I did have a follow-up question about layout. When you're doing a long run like Green Lantern, how do you? get past the monotony of drawing the character punching this way or punching like it just seems like you'd be in so many situations where you're like okay i've drawn uh hal jordan punching the character with his right arm a numerous time how do you avoid the monotony of drawing the same scene over and over well really when it i mean when it came to green lantern there wasn't a lot of that i mean it there's so much diversity within the story itself you know that, that which is one of the reasons why it's so cool even though it has you know jeff had a beginning and an end and uh, these ideas not, not too many issues were very similar and we went all over the place um in terms of types of stories we told it's just the the addition of the characters really you know when you have something uh, when you get to focus on sinestro for instance then it's like a different story it's fun to, and I really like Sinestro. I like what we did with Sinestro. I think he's yeah. got to be the for the most part, right? But for the time that he was a Green Lantern, I really enjoyed the fact that I got to be the guy who did that because I liked him. He was this obnoxious, not obnoxious, he's very full of himself. Obviously. Yes. Very good. But, <laughs> but his heart is in the right. What he wanted to do, and then Jeff told that. You know, when, when we got to touch on the death of his wife, you know, and just the tragedy in his in his existence, you know, then it's like, well, it's a, it's a very touching thing. Monotony would mostly exist if I just didn't make the story. Hmm. But I... Makes sense. Makes sense. You know, they were... And touching... Let's, let's, let's go back and touch... We, we talk about some of the people I've worked with. Pete Tomasi, because we never really finished that part. We talked about what we talked about Jeff, but Pete and I have done incredible work together. Um, I really think that our run on Detective was awesome. Top I top. wish it was fantastic. I love doing it. I love Pete's how Pete tells a story. Uh, just a really a nice visceral story. A lot of humanity stuck in it. Um, and, and since we're the same, from the same age, you know, we grew up in the same area, we we're influenced by the same movies and all of this stuff. So I get where Pete's coming from. I, I understand Pete really well. And, I, and he understands me really well. So when we tell a story, uh, I, I don't have any trouble knowing Pete Tomasi, what he's trying to say. I appreciate his, his perspective. I, I like it. Um, We've, and then for that matter, when, when I went up on Superman, uh, you know, it was Pat Gleason and Pete Tomasi bouncing back and forth. And two guys who really wanted to tell this type of story, you know, the, 
family story that they had pulled into. So I never had a, a story that I didn't enjoy out of both of these guys, whether they were whether they were um, primary storyteller on this one or, or primary storyteller storyteller on the next one. You know, they were collaborators. <clears throat> how they collaborated, you'd have to ask them. I don't even know how they managed to do it. But their but their approach was really uh, understandable to me. Peter Tomasi to me is an unsung hero talent at DC Comics uh, from his time as editor on Batman to uh, him doing Batman and Robin with, with Patrick Leeson and you you did some issues there. Superman. Yes. Uh, and, and I keep telling, I tell my friends this all the time. During that period where uh, Snyder and Capullo were doing a Batman Zero Year, which is kind of like a flashback story, Peter Tomasi was writing the current Batman, you know, in Batman and Robin, what Batman was going through post Damian Wayne's death. That was Peter writing the current Batman for like a year. And so like, I love Peter and Peter Tomasi. Black Adam, you guys did together, I thought was, was awesome. Post Fire, yeah. Like when you think of that story, like, here you got this character, and, and Pete's good at this kind of thing. So you got a guy who basically killed an entire country of people. Pissed off, old you know, old school retribution, scorched earth, everybody, and he's the hero of the story. So this great story, and, and even uh, and you know all throughout all this this story where Pete's telling, you know, as he's pursuing the res trying to resurrect ISIS, you know, this is he's putting himself through all of this crap, and you know that he's not going to get satisfaction. Can't let the guy like this get sad, and you know that it's coming. You at this point, you really want it for him, you know, and you're so you're conflicted. You're thinking, God, this guy is just killing an entire country of people. But you know, come on, <laughs> come on, you can do it. It was it was really a wild story to be a part of. Other stuff, uh, Judd Winnick when I did Batman back in the day. Uh, yeah. It's just one year of Batman, so now I've got like one year of Batman, one year of Detective. Um, but that that stuff was pretty pivotal. And that was my introduction great. to your work, the, the stuff with Judd. That was my, the first time I was like, whoa, who is this guy? And ever since then, that's where it started. Doug, I, we wanted to know, um, obviously we think your art is amazing. Uh, we wanted to know what your artistic influences are, past and present, and if there's any artists out there that you are impressed with today. So I grew up reading comics essentially in the 70s, okay? Huge formation that that era has left a permanent impression on me. I only read Marvel comics. It's not not that I didn't like beat the heroes, but the, there was a reason for it, because the guy who gave me comics only gave me Marvel. So anybody who was drawing comics at Marvel, and I've, I've, been, I've been through the list, and Sometimes I leave out, but they were all so influential to me because I was so fascinated by what they did. Um, the first one that people often dismiss is in the right word. He, he doesn't come up a lot in, in, in people's A list of influences, but Herb Trimpey, who did a tremendous amount of Hulk back then, he understood what visceral comic book storytelling was all about. And it was super hand-fisted. He had a style that me as a young guy just really loved. I loved how he did stuff. I, I, I ate it up, anything that he did, but primarily it was his Hulk run that just fascinated me. But he, he did other stuff too, but that was what really got me. Because I married the fact that I love the Hulk. He drew the Hulk to me really well. So, boom, he, he'll always stand. I, in fact, I met him before he passed away at a con, and he was just an intensely nice guy. Amazingly sweet and, and full of wonderful stories. Others, some of the top ones, were especially uh, Gil Kane. Gil Kane, yes. Yeah. Um, he's just a, a draftsman and, and a, a anatomically very knowledgeable artist, especially in those days. He, he would do stuff uh, that other people wouldn't do because he could do it really well. Like you, you might think like looking up an upshot, looking up somebody's nose is, well, it's a dramatic shot, but he would actually do it and do it right. A lot of people wouldn't. They they wouldn't do that because they weren't 
may be comfortable with the shot, but he he had it down. <laughs> and he was always known that a Gil Kane cover can sell a comic. They put him on covers, you know, maybe like the interiors would reflect it, but it, the cover, he can sell a cover. I always admired what he did. He saw him on Werewolf by Night for a few issues, looked great, you know. I saw him you know, Spider Man, I saw him wherever they fought to put him. Barry Windsor Smith, I don't know if you guys oh, know. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, what the next? Oh my gosh. He did a uh, Conan run. Oh. Um, I think he run. did like the first 22 issues or 26 issues of the original Conan run from Marvel. And you literally watched a guy progress artistically. Doing, first, he was a bit Jack Kirby, and then he became pure Barry Windsor Smith. And it was, I loved it. I, I became a huge fan at that point. Um, so he was a big, big influence. His Weapon X run was my favorite stuff out there. Incredible. He's, he's, he's quite the quite the artist. What What about today? What about today? Like, uh, who do you see? I mean, uh, Pat Pat aside, because I know that's that's your friend. <laughs> that would have been my first choice. <laughs> I read collections mostly, and it, it varies who does it. Um, but some of the things that I've really liked as I as I read them are, are largely influenced, of course, by the writing and the art. So if the art and the writing go together really well. So for example, if I said uh, that John McCrae did Hitman, I read the Hitman run, I just absorbed it because I loved what it was. I loved it. It's, it's like it was a very, uh, it was funny, violent, and friendly. Like, friendships meant a lot in the story. Like, the, the friendships between the primary characters were the driving force behind the story. And I loved it, and I loved how John McCray did it. So I'm always gonna love John's stuff, you know, for the rest of eternity. If I can look at art and, and think, well, I would've read that guy's stuff for sure. If I try to like, like Tony Daniels, for instance. Mm -hmm. I really like Tony's work because I know if I picked Tony Daniels stuff up as a kid, I would have absolutely loved his work. I would have read it based on Tony's work. Just alone, I would have just looked at it. Jim Lee, of course, is always going to be, he, he's, he's such a, um, an accomplished guy who, who has had such a huge influence on everybody in this industry in terms of how comics can look. So Doug, over the years, you've worked with a ton of different comic book characters. Are there any characters that you haven't worked with that you would like to in the future? And if you could tomorrow have a dream collaboration with someone, who would be your dream collaborator? I've worked on so many characters. The, probably the answer that, because I've been asked that before, I've never done like a straight up Wonder Woman project. And like I, she's been a part of what I've done for years, but she, um, I've never done a Wonder Woman story. I did a Wonder Woman story in conjunction with just JLA, for instance. I did Wonder Woman and Superman when they were in their team up. But I never just did a Wonder Woman story. And that's one of the things I'd like to do, is it would be so much fun to be Frankenstein again someday, uh, just because it was so fun. So I don't know if Morrison would ever write another lick of Frankenstein. I don't know if he, he wants to. But I had a lot of fun doing it. I would, as long as the sensibility was right, I'd work on, I'd do that. Manchester Black's sister, I would love to see her get used at some point. But she's, she was really, I liked the design. I thought the design was good. The character is good. And Joe had created a, you know, a really interesting, uh, you know, situation between her and her brother, um, which got touched on in, in stories, but, so oh, you 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 would work with Joe Kelly on that? that is, would that be the ideal person you would uh, want to revisit yeah, you know, that character with? Joe, you know, Joe went on to do Man of Actions, you know, and create stuff for film and television or whatever. So I don't know if he even writes comics anymore. I haven't cool. seen his name in a long time. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. Everybody that I've worked with and, and people that I'm working with now, like there isn't there isn't anyone I. I've always thought, oh, I can't wait to work with that person that I haven't already got to, because now working with Jeff Lemire, well, that, that kind of takes care of that, because Jeff and I have always had this idea for years, and now we're doing it, so, you 
know, that's kind of, it's, that's put to rest. Um, anytime I get to work with guys I'm super comfortable with and, and I really like what they do. And obviously if, if Morrison wanted to do something again, that'd be great. I wish that Pete and I got to do more Batman. Yes. Uh, and I do, I also do like it when we get to do like, like the four issues, like doing something like the Black Adam story with Pete, where do you find another one like that? You know, where do you get to do another story like that? Uh, those things just come around eventually somehow by accident or by because somebody really wanted to do it. You know, why did Pete do that story back then? I guess we'd have to ask. When you think about it back in those days, it was, it's one of the pages of 52 and uh, Black Adam had a, a major storyline. So yeah, Black Adam had his little mini series. Then Booster Gold had his sto a story that Jeff did. So it kind of it evolved out of the 52 story. I got to ask this, 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 this is the question that I, I really, I asked it to <laughs> David, your, one of your longtime collaborators and stuff. I don't know if you saw our little post on, on Instagram, but we stick with, stick with the idea of uh, uh, over the top part do. <laughs> arm wrestling, <laughs> arm wrestling competition between you and fellow penciler Greg Capullo. Do you think you can take him on? Do you think you can take him down? You know, I need this arm to do some other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make it happen. I almost destroyed my left arm, and, and I was foolish enough to let it happen. So if Greg had that kind of power in him, I'd, you know, I would, I would be, I would, I'd be the one who comes out none the better. I mean, when it comes to it comes to the possibility that, that we'll ever be in the same place at the same time, that people egging us on, and, <laughs> and, 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 and as far as whether or not the better man wins, uh, I would have to decide: is it worth tearing up my left arm? I guess we could go right. We could go right. But then is it worth having a bad right arm? Yeah. <laughs> I was putting my money on you. We're just joking around, man. I don't, you know. <laughs> we'll lay those arms down and I'll just flop my hands out. There you, go. <laughs> you gotta do something, because you know, when you spend all your time sitting in a chair, you actually have to get off into exercise. So for oh. me it's in fact it's not even exercise. I actually don't lift weights to be healthy. I, I, I if anything it makes me less healthy. <laughs> I've been hurt so many times. But it's 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 just what I like to do, and it's how I it's how I get the energy out after sitting still for so long. It makes sense. Doug, is there anything that uh, that you're working on currently that you would like fans to know about? And also, if you were to introduce a new comic book fan to your work, what would you introduce them to first? I wish I could tell you I'm working with something with Lemire, but until DC says what it is, but it's it's cool. It's really it's, it's big. It's a lot of stuff. Actually, what I think would be a really great place to start would just be my recent uh, detective run, P, because it's it's not so big. It's a nice, tight little story, and it's it feeds into like the fun of Detective One Thousand, and then you know jump off from there and tell them. Like you would never say here. First thing you want to do is read Frankenstein. No, that would <laughs> that would just be confusing people. So something that's that doesn't require uh, months of research, like. As much as it'd be fun to say, yeah, pick up. If I told them to pick up issue, what is it, 43 of Green Lantern, and people here are going to be shocked or, you know, like need therapy at that point. Yes. <laughs> Black Hand is pretty rough. Either either the Batman run or the Detective run would probably be ideal. I love the one shot story. It was this after uh, Detective Comics 1000, the, the Joker story. I really love that story. It's one of my favorite stories uh, of that year. It's even seeing like the Joker taking selfies and all that stuff, I just thought that was really cool. We wanted to do just a one-off, like just a single issue story, standalone, because you don't see them too often these days. Dude, I, I loved it, and I, to me, it's one of my favorite. I, I, I'm a big fan of your art, so anything with your name on it, I pick up. So uh, you mentioned something with Jeff Lemire. I uh, can't wait. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you mentioned it's on DC, so I'm, I'm getting it. I'm glad you mentioned that because as far as DC solicitations, they, they have released at least up to April. And I know the last thing I, I saw you on was the death metal covers, uh, the one out of 25 variants, obviously detective comics and stuff like that. And so I was like, okay, where's Doug? No, this is not good. <laughs> so I'm glad that you mentioned something. I am working. 
I just want to thank you uh, for giving us the opportunity to interview you. For, for me, it's like a dream come true. We're, you know, we're following our dreams. Our goal is to kind of interview the people that inspired us to be comic book fans. And so um, you doing this so early on in our show, uh, I really, it, it really just lets us know we're doing the right thing. And I really appreciate you joining us. Well, that's all for our show. If you like what you see, please subscribe and hit the like button. Check out some of our other shows. We're the Stash Bros. I'm Mike, speaking for Chris. We're out. Peace!